Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Starnard. Welcome to the March studio vlog. Hi, it's me from the future. I totally forgot to say thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video. Your names are on screen. I could not keep doing this without your support, so thank you so much. If you also want to support me, my Patreon link is down below. There's a bunch of cool stuff. You get to see my art early. There is a monthly audio podcast, a monthly sticker and postcard, and monthly original. So go check it out. See if anything interests you. I have been having a lot of fun. I've never felt better about my Patreon. Um, I'm just so happy with it. I've been loving the rewards that I make every month. I've been loving getting to connect with you guys more. It's just super fun. Uh, so please go check it out. Okay, back to the video. It's March 10th. I haven't, I've just now started the vlog. Honestly, I, I'm really trying to like take it slow, take it easy this month. I really feel like I have not had like legitimate time off since like October and I'm a little tired. Last month I was able to kind of finish and unload a lot of projects. So I'm kind of in a lull. I'm kind of where like, you know, nothing really major is going on. So I've been kind of taking it easy. I haven't really been pushing myself to like film if I didn't have to, you know, I've been taking it slow. I really, really, really want to try to not take on anything else major, any big projects for at least a month. I really want to keep this month easy, <laughs> especially because I know for the next two months, March and April, pretty much every weekend is going to be pretty busy. I've got like a lot of just activities going on, which will be really fun. So I don't want to be like super exhausted all the time between work projects, life stuff, you know? One of the things that I'm doing is I'm going to my first ever real concert tonight. I know. It's pathetic. <laughs> I'm gonna go see Greta Van Fleet with a friend from middle school who recently like moved to Florida. So that'll be really exciting. I'm super excited. I don't know every Greta Van Fleet song, but I do really like Greta Van Fleet. Uh, so I'm, I'm just really excited. The only other concerts I've been to was Jonas Brothers when I was eight or nine. And I don't think I had a very good time. I barely remember it. And then I went to like this Earth Day thing <laughs> in DC and my mom and I went and it was not a concert, um, but there was music. And we went to just go see Fallout Brother, Fall, Fallout Brothers, Fallout Boy. And then we left right away. And it was like, it was fun, but it was not a concert. So this is like my first legitimate concert and I'm really, really excited. I'm really excited. It's like a little treat myself thing. I realized for the past few years, I have not, except for like the only things that I really buy for myself that is not art or business related is books. And those I buy used and I only spend like $25 max at a time. I don't buy things for myself. I don't treat myself ever. And so for the past year or so, I've been like trying to do something that was a bit of a splurge and a bit self-indulgent. I was gonna go, I was gonna go skydiving. That fell through because I got COVID. I technically still could go, but like it was in my calendar and then it didn't happen. So I feel like I gotta wait till the time is right again. You know what I mean? It's a mental thing. I was really close to buying myself the Claudia American Girl doll because I'm obsessed with her. I'm in love with her. I'm honestly still tempted but I think that's a bit too much of a waste of money. So I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. So this is like my little treat myself. This is my little self-indulgent thing that I'm spending money on. I'm finally getting to actually do it. It's finally happening. And I'm just really excited. But yeah, I'm certainly going to try to film some stuff while I'm there. I'm gonna have a good time. I'm bringing my phone. I'm not bringing a camera, obviously. Um, but so hopefully there will be some footage from that. But beyond that, I, it's still the beginning of the month. So I don't know what happens for the rest of this video, but I hope you enjoy. <laughs> I hope I do too. Uh, so I, well, I'll talk to you later, I guess, at the, at the concert. I get, bye. So my friend texted me right before or called me and she was like, hey, I'm sick. I can't come. And I was already halfway there and I was like, wow, I don't know what I'm going to do. I ended up going by myself, which was crazy. I've never done anything like that by myself before. And it ended up being so much fun. Obviously I would have loved it if she came but I had such a good time. I ended up being next to this other girl about my age who also came by herself. And we ended up like talking and like kind of hanging out the whole time. And it just made it such a fun, cool, unique experience. Definitely like an exercise in independence, the most independent I've been for like a social event. It was just really cool. A great, amazing experience. I had terrible seats and I loved it. We got to like watch them like go on stage and like sneak around behind stage and stuff. And that was like a really fun time. The set was amazing. They were really great live. Definitely reinforced my love for Greta Van Fleet. They were just so amazing. And like, what a great first concert experience. I just had such a good time and I'm so glad that I went and didn't chicken out because I had to go alone. It was great. So it was my sister's spring break, I think I around this time, maybe. 
and we wanted to make sure that we were like doing some fun cool stuff and not just sitting around at home the whole time we went to yeah this was definitely spring break we went to this place called heritage park which is this really cool thing in florida it's where i mean there's a bunch of things that happen there there's like a wedding venue a botanical garden um just like a, a community type center thing where like art i think there's a gallery of just a lot of cool stuff I've only seen a bit of it because every time we go, we're always super rushed. But like the main thing that especially we go there for is the botanical gardens and then the houses. So basically, as I understand it, there are a bunch of like historical houses that had to be uprooted from wherever they came from and they get donated to Heritage Village or Heritage Park. I don't know. I think it's Heritage Village. And so there's just a bunch of these like old houses all on this like little like park area. And they're really, really cool, really beautiful, just these historical buildings. And they're so cool. It's so interesting. They're from all over the place. A lot of them are local to Florida, the but obviously like they weren't really founded weird. there. Or are those, oh my gosh, no, those are all cocoons. Oh my gosh. So we spent quite a bit of time. I think the day we went, it was Sunday, so it wasn't open for very long. Um, and like probably the most exciting thing was like seeing a okay, thousand yeah, baby the alligators. There's the other. Oh my god, they're so tiny. Oh my god, they're moving. They're moving. But if they're out, that means their mother is near. I want them to move again. Move! Go. They, they look like raccoons. Lights. They literally look like raccoons. They look like sure okay, we video. found the mom. She's right there. Right there. And uh, the walking path is literally right there. People are standing like right over there taking pictures of the babies. Oh my god, it's really big. Like it's a huge There's another baby. There must be so many. I didn't know where the mom was at the time. Oh my gosh. Oh, blood oranges. They've got a fruit garden. But yeah, it's just a really neat place. We spent most of the time in the botanical gardens and then we wasted a lot of time on the alligators. It's it's really gorgeous there. We really want to go back to look more at the houses. We also like picnic there. We brought lunch and we sat underneath the trees and and had a nice lunch it was just a really like beautiful day a really nice time i love old stuff i've always loved just old stuff so going to a place like this where all of the houses are set up on the inside to be as they were when they were like made and donated which is really cool i also really like there's this fish plate a lot of fish stuff obviously because it's florida and i loved i loved it so i was just like really enjoying looking at all the old stuff So back in February, when I went to that farmer's market store type thing, I took a lot of pictures of like the veggies and stuff that I just thought were pretty. There's this picture of radishes, or I don't know. Is it a radish? Is it a, what's the other thing? A turnip? I don't know. It, it said they were radishes if I remember right, but I don't know shit about vegetables. So you tell, you tell me, I don't know. But I had this picture and for some reason it just really like was genuinely calling to me. I loved the colors and the shape of the leaves and, and the way they were bunched together. So I thought, you know, let me make this the March Patreon original. I just really like it. I decided to do it in oil pastels because I have also really been itching to work more with them. And I'm really pleased with that choice. And I think it paired really well with the subject matter. Like I think overall, I just scratched the itch that I that had led to these pieces, you know? However, the process with these oil pastels did not go as smoothly as I had hoped. 
back when I had first tried these out on my channel, I think, or not I think, but like during the last holiday season, I don't know when exactly, I did mention that in comparison to the crayons I was using at the same time, I found them surprisingly harder to work with, but overall I liked them and enjoyed the process and was definitely really happy with the result in that video. And obviously I don't remember every word I said, so there's definitely the possibility that my overall impression of the oil pastels was that they were bad or that at some point I mentioned that I didn't like the brand or the performance. But from what I remember, especially with the main thing in my brain being that I loved the final product that they produced, I remember overall liking the pastels. So I was a little frustrated and confused when they were performing like kind of bad on these radishes. But I did get quite a few comments on that old video saying that these pastels are like not good quality. Like they're bad quality. They're like the worst quality I could get. They're the cheapest of the cheap, whatever. Which again, I feel like at the time that surprised me because I really don't remember having that many problems with them. Like obviously there were enough issues to know that they weren't amazing professional quality, but I didn't think that they were bad quality. But for these pieces, I was really thinking like, yeah, I don't know if, if I can keep using these after this. But to be fair, I was using them on a really small piece of paper, which is probably the source of at least half of my problems. But I also had issues with layering and kind of blending it together. And I do remember having issues with layering the last time, but I do actually really like how these turn out. So it's not super fair to get all, all mad at these pastels and like say I'll never use them again. However, I would love the opportunity to work with very high quality pastels. I'm not sure I can imagine the difference. I'm sure you guys can relate, but when you've only ever used like the bad quality version of something, you can't really imagine it getting better or any other way that it could be, right? So I'm not not sure what exactly to expect the higher quality stuff to be like because like this is all I've ever known for oil pastels. And of course I'm super cheap and oil pastels can be pretty expensive and it's really really scary to invest in super expensive art supplies when I'm not even sure that I would use them often or like that I would like them enough. Like yes I do enjoy these cheap versions but what if the cheap version is so different from nice pastels that they don't even function the same and I decide I don't like the nice ones right? Which I <laughs> obviously I know that that's a very very unlikely, but that's like how my brain works. I'm cheap, I'm worried just about spending money, I don't like doing it, and this just seems too risky. I've gotten quite a few comments on that old oil pastel video and other video since asking me to try nicer oil pastels and also to try the Neo Color pastels from Karen Dosh, which I guess they're like an in-between oil pastels and crayons, so I've been told, I think, but I, I, as far as I understand, they're like really beautiful to work with. I think they must be either a newer product or someone like big in the art community recently started working with them like within the last half year or so because since that video where I talked about them like I have been seeing those neo colors everywhere they're all over my Instagram feed people are swatching them and trying them in videos like since pastels got put on my radar I see those all the time everyone is making art with them right now and I've definitely been tempted like when I went to Blix recently I saw them and I was like wow I definitely need to get some they were pretty expensive and I felt super intimidated by them Especially with open stock supplies like that, where the packs are like way too expensive, so you've got to buy like individual colors. I get so overwhelmed by all the color options. And with a medium that I don't know well, like with markers, it's no big deal. I know which colors that I would start with if I'm starting over. I know which ones that I want now. But with something that I don't know and I don't know how they work or how they interact, like I just had no idea what colors to start with. Like what are the staples? What do I need to get now? How few can I get away with? All that stuff, you know? So I just, I just didn't get any, <laughs> but maybe one day. So, I'm running to the post office later today, and I want to put together two little care packages, one for Jess or Gel Arts, because she and I are doing a art trade, which I love doing. I love doing art trades with like mutuals. I think it's so fun. And also, I need to put together like a little thank you for Denise, because she sent me her beautiful art supplies, and I want to say thank you. So I know Denise, I think she mentioned that she wanted a tiger print. So I'm gonna give her a tiger print. I'm gonna give each of them the Patreon rewards. I really hope they won't see this <laughs> until after they get them. If they watch, if they even watch. I always feel weird giving like thank you cards and business cards to people I do trades with, but I also feel like they're fun to have. So I'm gonna do that even though it's not really necessary. <laughs> Obviously, I need to give party sticker stickers. I don't know what prints to give. This is always like the hardest part. Okay. 
There we go, I think that's good. Let me package these up. It's March 26th, so it's been a minute. I have a feeling this vlog is gonna be very short. Um, I got sick, I got a cold. It was just a cold that turned into a really nasty sinus infection. Oh my God, I don't ever wanna do that again. I was down for the count, that was rough. Um, if you ever, if you're ever presented with the option to experience that, I would recommend you pass. Don't do that. But yeah, I was really out. I tried to do some work. I got some like businessy admin stuff done, some behind the scenes stuff, but I haven't filmed because I was looking really and feeling really rough and just did not want to be on camera. I've been tired. <laughs> and then when I wasn't tired, I was like catching up on like personal stuff. I saw a friend. Um, I was trying, you know, trying to live my life and unfortunately filming was not a top priority. Sorry to break it to you. One of the things that happened was I actually signed with a manager for like social media type stuff, dealing with other companies. If, if you wanna hear about that or that process, let me know, it won't change, you won't notice a difference. Like it doesn't mean anything for like you guys, it's just like a business thing. Um, but if you wanna know anything about that, let me know, we could totally talk about that in a future video. But yeah, that was the main thing that I was doing. I, a lot of stuff had to get put on hold. Like I couldn't go to my last two open figure studio classes um, because I didn't want to spread germs, obviously. I was able to, well, I, didn't, I mean, I guess I didn't do it, but like the Patreon stuff came in. So I sent out all the Patreon stuff. There's that, there's that. I was able to like send out all the Patreon stuff. I did that after I was super sick and contagious. So there shouldn't be any germs on those. I also did the Patreon exclusive video. Just, it unfortunately didn't have a voiceover cause I didn't have a voice, but I was able to put that out. I'll put like a little clip here. Um, if you want, it was, I really actually really like it. It was a sketchbook spread and I really like the stuff, you know, that came out of it. So if you're interested every month, I do an exclusive video. Um, and you can watch the previous ones. So even if you join, you know, in April, you can see this month's video. So definitely go check that out. Yeah, it was a really good and really bad time to be sick. Um, I had a bunch of stuff that I wanted to do. It was my sister's spring break. So I wanted, and I also, I had just gone to a park and gone, I went penny boarding and it was really, really fun. And I was thinking about like all these things that I could do for free and cheap, like museums and art museums and like local history stuff, parks and nature reserves. And I had this like list of stuff that I was gonna do this week and just like in general, start going out more. And then I got sick and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> However, it was a really good time because this month has actually been super light anyways. Um, this vlog would have been boring no matter what because I was really trying to focus on getting my schedule back to normal. It honestly has not been normal since, you know, before the holidays. So this was gonna be my first month where I had no major side project or like, you know, big time consuming thing going on. I had nothing that I was preparing for, um, like literally nothing except for regular work stuff. And so I was gonna get back into a regular work routine, a regular schedule, get back into doing weekly videos plus bonus videos whenever I could. So I, I really didn't have anything major going on. Like I, did, I had just finished all my commissions. I had a bunch of stuff kind of filmed. A, a lot of the recent videos that I did, finishing a sketchbook, doing a sketchbook tour and starting a new sketchbook. That's the kind of stuff that I like to do basically in a matter of days anyways. So I had a bunch of videos pre-filmed on accident. So it was a really good time to get sick. I could take a full week off and I wasn't worried about missing anything. So that worked out really well. It, it did also suck because this was kind of my month to take off and enjoy some downtime before things start picking up again. Cause I have, I do have projects that I want to start. So I still haven't really gotten to take a break. I'm beginning to think that that's just what adult life is, is you never get to take your break. I think to round out this month, I want to do some sketchbook work. Technically I'm in that weird in between time of sketchbooks where I, you know, I finish it early, but my, my first month of using it hasn't started yet. Um, so I'm not really worried about getting sketchbook work done. I would like to do, I have a page kind of sketched out. I would like to finish that page at least. 
yeah, and actually that's it. That's it. I have like some market stuff that I want to do, but I'm making a whole separate market video. So I'm not, you're not going to see any of that in this video, but I do have some market prep that I want to do. Yeah, the literally the only other work I have planned for myself is to do some real stuff for Instagram. No reason other than the fact that I have free time to do that. <laughs> They've stopped, I think there's after this round, I have 10 more days or something like that to make money from reels. And then they canceled the reels bonus program. So you can't make money from reels anymore, which frankly, I don't care. It is a bummer. It was a nice like change, but I found it super shady. Honestly, I have a reel out right now that's gone like, you know, viral, semi-viral about like how much my, it was an income report for January and I make like a dollar on that a day. And it's like, but I make the same amount from reels that get like a fraction of the, it's very weird the way they do it. Like they let, they say like, oh, you can make up to like 8,000. Like you, I think different people have different caps of how much they can make. I think my cap is something like $8,000. I've never made more than $200 and I'll make like $10, but then, and they do periods of like where you have 30 days to make money. The first day I'll make like $10. And then after that, I'll make like a dollar a day, if that, if I'm lucky. And like, they don't tell you how the distribution works or like there's no transparency on it whatsoever. It's, I think it's very much rigged to like not have to pay people. It just, it literally doesn't make sense. Like it, it really doesn't make sense the way I get compensated for my reels. I've also noticed that if I have a reel that starts to do really well, all of a sudden my, I won't be making money anymore. And it'll be like, you have to sign up to make money from reels. And like, it, then it'll be delayed a day. So I'm not making any money from that, that one, like it, it'll make a lot of money the first day it's out and I, I won't make money from that. Um, so I've noticed that every time a reel does really well, all of a sudden I'm not signed up anymore and I have to re-sign up. So I found it super, I've the whole time that I've been doing it, I've, I found it very sketchy and very weird and not worthwhile. Um, I think it's weird. So I'm really not bummed about that going away. But I do think it's interesting when a lot of um, social media apps are trying to make it possible for people to make money that Instagram is taking away their only way that you can make money. So I'm wondering if that's going to be replaced in any way. Um, yeah, Instagram has been a mess lately. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm doing well enough. I have, I'm coming up on 100,000 uh, followers, which is exciting. I'm not getting my hopes up. I spent a whole year stuck at 56,000 very recently. So like if I hit it, I, I hit it. If I don't, I don't, it's whatever. But it is very exciting to watch that number go up there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do some reels cause I have some time to do that. I'm gonna do some art and yeah, that's pretty much gonna be my month.
film the outro now while I have my camera set up because I know nothing else remarkable is happening this month. Thank you so much for watching. Please check me out on Patreon and all that stuff. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, the whole shebang, you know what to do. Next week should be a video all about my first art market and how, you know, how I did that and how it went, so stay tuned for that. I hope you have a great day. Um, I hope you had a great March. I hope you're ready for April. I know I am. Uh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I hope you're all staying germ-free. Uh, go wash your hands, make a sandwich, and go do some art. <laughs> Bye.